Hello everybody, welcome to today's podcast. With addiction, I think you've got to understand that you probably don't love yourself enough as well. There's a lot of connection between when you've got some issues and things have happened to you and now you're addicted to certain things like food or drugs or smoking. And now because of that, your actual self-love can almost diminish, I think, because you get cross with yourself all the time because in some ways you don't want to be addicted and you know what you're doing is not good for you. You can work on your self-love. You really can. You can increase it and you can stop being negative about yourself because I think when you had a negative experience or negative experiences, it creates negativity in the actual aura and also in your heart and you must be suffering from a lot of pain and hurt, anger. If there was any kind of violence, you'd have some fear as well and perhaps you've got PTSD. Therefore, it's no point not being nice to yourself. You really have to be nice to yourself now. And the more kind you are to yourself, I think the easier it will be to get over your addiction. Because your addictions, there's your little spiritual band-aid, and it, it's a good idea when it first happened, probably in some ways you could cope and rebalance. But now if it's become a habit as well, you need to really try and nail it and get rid of it, particularly if it's an unhealthy addiction. You will know how you feel. You're the only one who knows how you feel. But I think I know how you feel too. And probably you get mad with yourself and you get angry with yourself and feel guilty and, and some shame because you know you drank too much or you ate too much or you gambled too much or you shopped too much. It doesn't really matter which one you did. There's a little part of you in the back of your head, in the back of your mind, telling you that you shouldn't be doing this or not being really happy with it. And that's your lack of love for yourself. When I say you need to love yourself, I mean you need to love yourself unconditionally. All the good parts, all the bad parts, all the ordinary parts, all the wonderful parts, you need to love all of those parts. And remember that you don't have to live up to other people's expectations. They didn't go through what you went through. So it's easy for them to make all their judgments or give this very good advice that's not very good advice, I found. You really have to be walking in someone else's shoes to really understand it. And if you've done the walk, then I think you can do the talk. But until you've done the walk, I think you should probably just be quiet and just be a loving friend or parent or sibling. The way to love yourself more is, first of all, to stop the bad-mouthing. Stop bad-mouthing yourself. Stop telling yourself off and berating yourself. Just understand that you're a, like a little animal in pain and you're trying to find some way to numb out the pain and lessen the pain. And once you get your head around that, then it's a bit easier. So when you want to soothe yourself, and that's what you're doing, self-medicating, try to do it in a different way. Change what you're doing. Don't use the same mediums you're using, use something else. So spoil yourself if it means you go and buy yourself something nice, or your friend, uh, organise to go out for dinner with someone you really like, go and watch a movie you really enjoy. Try to self-soothe in different ways, because your addiction is really just self-soothing. That's what you're doing, you're self-medicating. So if you can replace it, start keep replacing it, that's a way to love yourself. So the experience actually is a completely positive one. And it doesn't have any negative effects on you. That's what you want to try and do is find medication that is loving and kind and doesn't have any negative effect on you. The other way is to bring love into your aura. We can do that. Love is an actual energy. So you focus and you sit and you bring love into your aura and flood your whole aura with love. I usually also send it to my heart and I've done some podcasts on this. So I just fill up my heart and my heart chakra with love. Pink's a good colour to use because sometimes we need a visual. So you just keep sending pink light to your heart, pink light to your heart chakra, and you keep being loving to yourself. Now, if you come out of abuse, you've had someone who's been cruel to you, you don't want to start being cruel to you too. Now, you already did that. <laughs> you want to get past that. Now you want to be very kind to yourself. And, of course, kind to other people. Because when we have addictions, it does affect other people. They are affected by it. For example, if your sister's now an alcoholic and you don't drink, you'll still be affected. Or if you're, you know, your mum's got an eating 
disorder and she's now really, really big and she's getting all these illnesses, that's going to affect you as well. So you've got to understand that you're not an island. So if you love yourself more and nurture yourself more and go on the road of recovery and start loving yourself, then you'll find that it'll be easier for those who love you as well. It's like a self-help thing. Your deficit in love, I found that with all people who are addicted, that at the very beginning particularly, we're deficit in love. As you work on yourself, you'll find you love yourself more. You be kind to yourself. You'll be like the kind parent, not the bully parent. You'll be kind to yourself. You'll stop abusing yourself and your body. And as a consequence, in a weird way, you'll start to heal and stop abusing the other people around you because I think sometimes when we have addictions it really flows into the rest of our lives so we're not only affecting us but others. It's a very good thing every day to say in your mind 10 things that are good about yourself and every day you'll find that you'll get better at it. When I first started doing it I found it really hard to do but now I can quite quickly do it. And another practice I've spoken about before is you stand in front of the mirror and you tell yourself that you love yourself. You look at yourself and you tell yourself you love yourself and you'll find that quite emotional. When I first started doing it, I actually couldn't say it. And then when I did say it, then I would just stand there and cry. And I realised how powerful that was, that I had been treated in such an unloving way this life that now I found it hard to actually give that to myself. Of course it's improved and I just dub myself and all the bits and I just work on improving the parts I'd like to improve. But it's not like I'm negative about the parts I need to improve. I don't see it like that. I just see myself like a work in progress. Sometimes when I fall over I just get up and dust myself off and get going again. You can do this. I've done it. It's uh, ongoing and you will sometimes have plateaus where you get on a plateau and you don't feel like you're going anywhere but that's usually just before you go to stage two so don't give up when you hit the plateau. Loving yourself will also have another really good uh, aspect to it because when we love ourselves more our capacity to love others is greater and the other thing is our capacity to forgive is increased. When we love ourselves we are more likely to forgive others but more importantly, we're more likely to forgive ourselves. And you need to forgive yourself. For anything wrongdoing, you can do a little meditation or a prayer and you can send messages to people telepathically to ask to be forgiven for when you maybe misbehaved or things you did you didn't like because they're in the past now and you can let go of any grudges that you have towards others and yourself. And by forgiving yourself, you release a lot of negative energy from your aura and, and the need to keep the repeat behaviour because now you are a different person vibrationally. I found that the more love I brought in, the more self-love I brought into my aura, the lighter I felt. I felt better about myself. I didn't dwell on things so much. I had more of a let's move on feeling about it because the energy was moving in me and that made me move and you might find that as well. Sometimes we have opted to have these experiences for our soul growth and for our lessons. It will be something that will be very life-changing for you in this life and maybe you need to understand that as well. The other thing I wanted to talk about in this podcast was past lives that you might need to be aware that you could have had addictions in other lives. Often people who have in the energy work have been shamans and medicine men and witches, wizards, and we would have used mushrooms and all different herbs and maybe even smoked different types of plants, perhaps were in the opium dens. A lot of people use these mechanisms to get into an altered state to channel and or to do healing, see visions. So we have may have a um, kind of a knowing about all this addiction because these things were obviously addictive. So you might need to understand that you might have come 
from some past lives when you had that. So you're also breaking up past life pattern this life. Uh, on the converse of that, you can have a total aversion to certain things. I know someone who had died at quite a young age through a drug overdose. In this life, she was really anti-drugs, like so anti-drugs. So there can be one or two ways that we go with that one. I encourage you to love yourself. I really do. And to be kind to yourself and be gentle and comforting and nurturing. All the things that you would do for a good friend or uh, one of your family to nurture them along. Do that for yourself now. And nurturing means looking after yourself and looking after your body and looking after your health and putting good things in your body, things that are to help your body. So start on the edges and work your way in, that's what I think. And bit by bit and step by step, uh, say every day loving things about yourself and stop saying mean, nasty stuff in your head about yourself. You're not a failure, you're not a loser. You're just a person who was in pain and was hurting and was trying to find a spiritual bandage to help them get through everything. That's what you were. You don't need to do that as much anymore. You can bandage yourself with other things and you can fill your aura with light and become a loving person. And also having been through this experience, if you are on the road to recovery, you can actually help other people. So perhaps you will go into some counseling or healing work and you will guide other people through to the light. Because having been in it is very different to just reading about it in the book or going to uni. You're going to have a completely different understanding of what's really going on. So I encourage you to love yourself, to do lots of work on that every day. Bring the loving in, bring the love in, bring the love in, fill yourself up with love, fill yourself up with love. And let go of all the grudges and all the negative talk and all the negative thoughts and start to be kind to yourself. So I'm sending you lots and lots of love and lots and lots of healing and light and I'm hoping that by doing this, by loving yourself more, you will stop hurting yourself because you're hurting. That's what I'm trying to say. Find another way to do it now. Have a good week. Think about what I'm doing these podcasts for you and for to help other people, other people who are around you because if you get better, they get better too. Remember that. The people who love you, they also feel your pain. And if you can alleviate your pain somewhat, you alleviate their pain too. Okay, that's all for today. And uh, sending you lots of love and light.